y allá aprendí los valores del pueblo, fe y familia y trabajo. Faith, family and work. Faith, family and work. Los mismos valores de la comunidad latina aquí en nuestro país. Somos americanos todos. Uh, you want me to translate that in one word in English? Pandering. That's Democrat vice presidential nominee Tim Kaine, who last week, as soon as he was announced as Hillary Clinton's choice, came out saying, hey, in the first 100 days of a new Clinton, Clinton administration, there's going to be amnesty. And then last night, among many different things he did, he went back to speaking Spanish to underscore that. Let's get an analysis now, and to do so, we're joined from Newsmax Washington by retired U.S. Army Colonel Patrick Murray. Uh, Colonel Murray served in Iraq, Russia, and at the United Nations. Patrick is also the author of the book, Government is the Problem. Colonel, you heard uh, Senator Kane, who hopes to be the vice president, and there he is with more riffs in Spanish. It's pretty obvious. These guys just doing a pander fest, and it includes amnesty, something that's very serious. Well, thanks for having me on, J.D. Uh, look, did you watch that speech? I mean, I don't get paid enough to watch those speeches. I'll tell you what, Tim Kaine curing insomnia in two languages. That's what that was. Now, I live in Virginia, and Tim Kaine used to be the governor here. While he was governor, taxes went way up unemployment went way up. The entire last year when he was governor, he was AWOL, J.D. He went to be the head of the DNC and was working on that instead of being governor of Virginia. He also has a little corruption in his past, which I'm sure Hillary can identify with. He took $180,000 in gifts, which is not at all unlike what his successor, Republican governor Bob McDonald did, for which he was charged with corruption. Yeah, Bob McDonald charged with corruption and uh, sent to the slammer and then unanimously the courts vacated that verdict against the Republican McDonald. So I guess there's no real reason to take a look at what a Democrat like Tim Kaine would do. Uh, but it is worth noting, and you chronicled it for us, his governorship that last year of the four years there, he was busy with the Democrat National Committee did win a seat in the Senate, but he has yet to really distinguish himself other than with a leftist agenda in moderate clothing. Well, that's exactly right, and that's why I don't think he's going to bring in one more vote for Hillary, in Virginia at least, than she would already get. Look, he is an anti-coal guy. He is a big anti-Second Amendment, anti-gun guy. I think this is a strategic uh, decision on uh, the Clinton campaign's part because they're so underwater with white voters, especially white male voters. Now, they could have taken Sherrod Brown out of Ohio, but you do that, and if she wins, then Republican Governor John Casey gets to appoint uh, a senator. So probably a Republican. But here, with uh, her good buddy, Terry McAuliffe, as governor, he gets to appoint a Democrat, probably will appoint himself should Hillary win the presidency. Well, you know, Terry McAuliffe's been so good raising Chinese money over the years, especially for the Clinton-Gore campaign in 1996. More international intrigue that's politically related, and that, of course, is the DNC email hack. Uh, the leftist media culture was in a tizzy yesterday after Donald Trump sarcastically told Russia, why don't you guys find Hillary's emails? Let's look and listen. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. I think you will probably be rewarded mightily by our press. Let's see if that happens. That'll be next. Uh, so, predictably, the leftist press takes it in a completely different direction with ominous headlines saying that Donald Trump was telling a foreign state to spy on Clinton and gain intelligence. Of course, Donald Trump said after the interview that he was being sarcastic. CNN, all the gang, jumps in on this false narrative asking former CIA director Leon Panetta to comment. And, of course, Leon got his rhetorical licks in. Have a listen. I just think that uh, 
that's beyond the pale. Uh, there are a lot of concerns I have with uh, uh, his qualities uh, of leadership or lack thereof. Uh, and I think that kind of statement only reflects the fact that uh, he truly is not qualified to be president of the United States. Oh, really? Meantime, the, the woman whose emails were up for grabs, she's eminently qualified. Can you help me understand this, Colonel? Well, let me just break this down really quickly for your audience. So Trump said, hey, Russians, it's the DNC saying we think the Russians hacked us, right? And what they're really trying to do is detract from, you were a politician, they're good at pivoting. Let's don't look at what was in the content of these emails, how we rigged it for Hillary, how we're going after Bernie because of his Jewish faith, how we're making racist comments like with Hispanic uh, outreach is called Taco Bowl outreach, believe it or not. So they're saying, oh, yeah, it's the Russians. So Trump says, hey, look, if it's the Russians, maybe you've got those 33,000 emails that Hillary deleted. Here's the thing, J.D., that happened when Hillary Clinton was Secretary of State when she set up her own personal rickety whiskey still of a server that we know was hacked. And so that happened seven or, late, seven or eight years ago, up from 2009 until 2012. This, the, the server's gone. The emails are deleted by Hillary. And oh, by the way, she says, hey, don't worry about it. It was just stuff about Chelsea's wedding and, uh, you know, my yoga positions, and I apologize to your viewers for that mental image. Uh, well, there is another image and a recollection we have out of all of that, Colonel, and it was the FBI director laying out a case and then saying there was no there there, also admitting, also admitting that he didn't take part in the interviews and there was no contemporary uh, uh, recording or record made of Hillary's interviews by the FBI. Now, what is interesting about that is that it, uh, Jim Comey is such a creature of the bureaucracy. After giving her a free pass, he has put out some information that I think we better pay some attention to. It was covered uh, at our parent website, Newsmax.com. The headline here, FBI chief warns terrorist diaspora will come to the West. In other words, all the terrorists in Syria and that area of the uh, world are going to pour out of there like never before. He talked about what happened in Brussels and Paris. The clear intimation is it's going to come here. So uh, Hillary Clinton is the person to combat it. We've got a couple of minutes left here. That's exactly right, J.D. And I think that phrase that Comey used, terrorist diaspora, is going to become part of our lexicon thanks to Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton's policies of allowing all of these unchecked refugees in. And by the way, this isn't the first time that Director Comey has made mention of ISIS. We have active ISIS, the FBI does, active ISIS investigations going on in all 50 states. Every single state has an ISIS investigation going on. And what do we hear on day one from the Democrat Party at the convention? 61 speakers, hundreds of thousands of words, all kinds of topics, not one single mention of ISIS. And it didn't get better, much better on day two, J.D., and that's the day that that, that gentle little 86-year-old priest who was delivering mass in Normandy, France, had his throat slit by ISIS. Did they say anything at the convention? Was there a condemnation of this horrific act? Was there a prayer, a moment of silence? Not a single word. And I think that tells a whole lot. You know, when I was in the Army, it was about bottom line up front with what's important to you. And we've learned what's important to the Democrat Party, and it's not providing for the common defense. And on that cautionary note, dare I say ominous note, Colonel, we very much appreciate your time tonight from Newsmax Washington. Uh, still to come, special coverage of tonight's Democratic Convention, Hillary Clinton's acceptance speech about 10 o'clock Eastern, but in the interim at 9 o'clock, immediately following this program, Miranda Kahn will be in for Dennis Michael Lynch on DML Unfiltered. Again, I will see you back here at 10 o'clock to cover the final evening of the Democrat National Convention. Until then, stay brave, stay free, stay tuned, and thanks 